Okay, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Steve Kuo, and today I will be talking to you about Bookshelf JS. So, what is Bookshelf JX? Um, it's one of the most popular object relational mapper packages out for JavaScript. Um, it's a lean ORM, similar to SQL. <laughs> um, it's also similar to Backbone JS, and it has a concise code base that's simple to read and understand. It provides a flexible and efficient relation and nested relation loading. And it's centered around the forward CRUD operations of create, read, update, and delete. It is also built on Next.js, which is a SQL query builder, which allows you to drop down to a raw Next interface and use raw SQL query whenever you need a custom query. Meaning, if Bookshelf's missing something, you can build a custom query with Next. And this also allows you to chain methods together without creating uh, multi-line strings to send to the database. Bookshelf builds on top of this by providing functionality for creating data models, forming relations between these models, and other common tasks needed when querying a database. And Bookshelf and Next was created by Tim Greaser, I think, in 2013. So for database support, uh, Bookshelf JS supports multiple database backends. So you can switch between databases if you need to during your project. These databases include uh, Postgres, uh, MySQL, and SQL 8.3. But why use Bookshelf? Uh, I believe that it's always good to familiarize yourself with other ORMs, frameworks, and libraries out there. Um, the documentation, from what I've seen, is better than SQLize in terms of finding what you need. And the layout is definitely easier on the eye. So I'll show you what I mean. Um, so the, the layout is very similar to SQLize's documentation, except for the examples given are easy to decipher uh, what they mean. And this example shows you how to deal with the associations. So in terms of installation, um, we first have to install Next since it's built on it. And you should probably do this, um, yeah in NPM, and then install Bookshelf, and then also install whichever client you prefer to use. So we are familiar with using Postgres, so we would install NPM install PG. So now we have to initialize this by connecting it to the database. So all of the lower level functions, like connecting to the database, are handled by an underlying Next library. So in order to initialize your book instance, you'll need to create a Next instance first. And the library is created by passing an initialized client instance into the file. So remember that the client parameter is required. So we would substitute MySQL with the PG. And the connection option can be either an object or a connection string. And remember that the initialization only happens once in an app. So if, when you need to use the bookshelf instance later on, you will have to do a module.export bookshelf. So creating the models. This example shows how to define the models in the same file, but if you separate them, wherever you have your models, uh, require Bookshelf, and then you create the associations. Bookshelf allows for one-to-one, -one, one-to-many, and many-to-many, -many, or polymorphic associations. As you can see, the only required property name is a table name, which tells the model where to save and load the data from in the database. One of the issues um, regarding Bookshelf is the issue of circular dependencies. Uh, what are they? Uh, they're a relation between two or more modules, which either directly or indirectly depend on each other to function properly. If your models have any relations with each other and are in separate files, you might encounter this problem. Uh, Node can return unfinished copies of modules when you define these circular dependencies. Adding this plugin right here might help solve this issue by allowing you to specify relations between models. Uh, from then on, you can reference the models based on the string rather than a variable. Um, as you can see, instead of having variables in the has many association on line 12, we use a string instead. In order to access the string form of invoice, you can pass it as the first parameter in the model definition of invoice. Or when you export the model, you can export the string as well, as you can see on line 16. After creating the models, it's time to use them with Express. So, some of, so I'll show you some example routes. 
Uh, first, we have to require some libraries that, are, that might seem familiar to you, hopefully. And we also define body parser to handle request variables later on. We saw how to uh, create models earlier. Now, in order to perform an operation on multiple users at the same time, you need to create a collection. So to start with our API routes now, we'll start off by creating our user routes and have them require a user ID. On line four, we can see one notable difference that might stick out to you. That's the uh, forge method which is a simple helper function that instantiates a new model without needing the new keyword. The fetch method below fetches a model from the database and returns a promise. Uh, in line 20, save returns a promise as well, resolving to the save and updated model. And notice that user.get on line 22, that dot .get method gets the current value of the attribute from the model. Now to fetch the user, uh, we basically do the same thing. We do a forge um, with the rec.params ID and then fetch. And then here we're updating the user details. Uh, we're instantiating a new user model with the ID given from the parameter of the last slide. And then on line 50, we fetch with the required true, which means that the fetch is considered a failure if the model comes up blank. To delete the model, we use forge and fetch again. Then on line 73, we use the destroy method to delete it. Um, it performs a delete on the model using its ID as the constraint. Um, in conclusion, a lot of feedback online shows that there's much more room for growth in regarding bookshelf, and of course it's not perfect. Uh, some of the bad, there are no real data validation, and a lot of methods we've become familiar with in SQLize aren't present, such as find one or create. However, uh, one of the good things about book Bookshelf is that it's not overly bloated and it's fairly simple to use. And you can also build schemas by using the Bookshelf in Next, and you can also use Next's schema building. And uh, here's some of my sources that I use for this presentation. Thank you. <laughs>